If you're not already hyped about Sands of Aura to the point when the game is at the top of your Steam wishlist, well, I think you need to take a good hard look at the games that are currently on your wishlist and compare them to the upcoming release of Sands of Aura. I'm going to give you a second, do it now, look at your wishlist, now look at Sands of Aura, now back to your wishlist, now back to Sands of Aura. You're going to quickly come to the same conclusion that I have, that Sands of Aura looks really damn cool and that the end of October can't really come soon enough so that we all can play it. If you haven't reached that conclusion by yourself from looking at the Steam store page, look, I would seriously consider ordering an MRI brain scan. Why? What? Just look how cool it looks. You're going to explore an open world environment and tell them how. Go wherever you want, discover at your own pace, learn as the world sort of grows in scope around you as you explore in your own damn sand airship thing. Look, I don't know what to call it, but I do know that I want one. I know it looks really cool, and I know I can't wait to be the desert version of Jack Sparrow. What else do we have to be hype about? Well, if you're a huge lore nerd like me and you love things like the Silmarillion or Fire and Blood, you're in for a real treat with the universe that the studio at uh, Chasu Entertainment has created. It's a rich fictional backstory to, help, to tell him how. The corruption that plagues Talamhel has created a horde compromised of both man and other Talamhelic natives. The venerable ferrum of insectoid hive-minded Hashara, once warring nations have become an abominable army of undying malice. From doomsday cultists to fallen kings, the foes that guard the answers you seek are determined to see your end. Prepare for an unrelenting, unforgiving combat experience not to be taken lightly. Swing true, dear knight, swing true. With the hundreds of weapon components to be reclaimed from the crumbling remains of civilization, there are thousands of unique weapons to be forged. Find the hilt that suits just right. Yes, you heard that blurb correctly. You're going to be able to forge weapons from hundreds of components to form thousands of weapons that are your own creation. You're not getting a generic iron ass longsword for your character here. Everything is going to be centered around your character and your preferences as a player. Have a specific playstyle that you employ in action RPG games such as this? Well, between all the weapons and magical augmentations that are available, you're going to be able to create something that suits your character down to a T. Want to mix it up? Play something new? Find something new? Well, you're going to be rewarded with your experimentation just with all the possibilities that are available. Look, I know what you're thinking. All these role-playing opportunities, they sound amazing. And you're right. But the Sands of War game takes it a little further. Not only do you get to decide the fate of your own character in the universe, but the role playing is taken just a little further in that the player will also control sort of their own home base. Have you ever wanted to take control of the town of Kistrum from Diablo or, you know, customize and grow the town to become your version and like make it accentuate your character? Well, this vision is brought to life in Sands of Aura. The base of operations is referred to as Star Spire and you as the protagonist will directly influence the fate and prosperity of the town and its denizens to take the role playing just, you know, a little bit further. Working as an optional companion to core gameplay, Star Spire offers an opportunity to test your remnant traits of leadership and judgment. The choices you make regarding Star Spire's residents will alter your story and affect your fate, as well as the fate of others, but only if you choose to make those choices. Why is this important? And why is it something to get excited about in the genre? Well, everything combines to create an immersive experience without dulling down the min-maxing that also makes the genre what it is. Normally, with games like this and the genre, you don't really get both. You have one or the other, but you rarely get both. You either get a world with rich lore that can uh, sort of accentuate the ex immersive experience, or you get satisfying and gratifying gameplay with action and plenty of role-playing and min-maxing opportunities. You get one or the other. And very, very rarely both. What's exciting about Sands of Aura is the lack of compromise from either angle. From what we've seen thus far, the combat seems pretty fluid, and that's something that can really make and break an action RPG. You don't want a jarring experience, you want to feel like you're in control. You can already tell from supplementary material and exposition that our interest is going to be grabbed in the universe that Sands of Aura creates in its world of Talon Hell. 
If you haven't had a look at the game yet, or you're just totally unfamiliar with the title, look, I thoroughly recommend just giving the Steam store page a look, because it's going to leave an impression on you regardless of whether you enjoy um, that genre or not. Whether that be heavy role-playing, um, lore-heavy story, look, you're going to be up to your eyeballs in just about every aspect of Sansa Aura. The game is launching late in October on the 21st, and you can be rest assured that MGN will be the best place for all the Sands of Aura news, guides, gameplays, how-to content, and all the rest you've come to expect, really. We look forward to getting our hands on the game, and we'll see you all in Talon Hill.